make it your best friend and then just bring you up that next level to see results that will create optimal movement you think we're doing this exercise be like hey yo friend i'm just gonna leave that there to each their own i'm gonna attempt to film with my hair down <laughs> guess we'll see how this goes all right hey what is up kate the great here welcome back to my channel it's really nice to have you here today i'm going to go over five more tips to start your weight and fat loss journey part two if you haven't watched the first part yet make sure to check this one out i lay the beginning five tips that you will need to start your fitness journey, whether you are restarting it, starting it from scratch, or just like completely starting your journey. They're very simple tips. They're very easy tips. However, they're always difficult to execute, so make sure you really absorb them and take them to go, of course, like I always say. And yeah, all right, let's jump into it. My hair is already annoying me. I feel like it's gonna be up in like, a couple of minutes it's fine okay we're sidebarring way too much before we jump into this video please give it a like and subscribe down below it really helps to support me and my channel and so you can always come back and hang out with me again i have a plethora of different videos on here and i upload new videos every single week okay we're just gonna keep it and not touch it not touch it the thing is i move around so much all right i'm just really talking to myself Okay, jumping into it, these tips are not really categorized with anything. They're kind of just like random, but like all work together within the journey. Tip number one, put effort into educating yourself or absorbing education and knowledge from people who know what they're talking about. So for example, as we all know, and if you don't know, now you do, I am a trainer. That is brand new information. Best job in the world. What I do is try to educate my clients as much as I can. So for example, if someone is like, Kate, why are we doing this exercise? I will then ask them, why do you think we're doing this exercise? Now, to be totally honest, I'm assuming it's kind of annoying that I ask that because if I was the other person, I would be like, oh my gosh, I don't know. That's why I'm asking you but it's a way for the person to get to know their body and think about like okay so i'm curling my arm up i feel it here she called it a bicep curl it seems like it should work my bicep so then they will come back with some sort of answer so whether they're right or they're wrong there's no wrong answer if it's just a guess of course that's okay however the whole point of it is to have the client and the person get to know their body, get to know what the purpose of the exercise is because there's so many random exercises just thrown around out there. Put randomly into programs that have no purpose, and I've said this before on here, make sure there's a purpose to like what you're doing. Even if the purpose is just to have fun. Like I like to do random things, but I do it for fun. So that's the purpose. However, if you're finding that the exercise is not beneficial to you, it's essentially a waste of time. And if you feel like it is a waste of time, speak up, ask the trainer or do some research or DM the person that you're following. Be like, hey, I was doing this workout and this exercise in your program. Would you be able to explain why we're doing it? Also, just to learn. <laughs> I'm doing great. This whole hair thing seems so dramatic. Okay. Back to it. Oh, I lost my chain of thought now. I lost it. But basically my point is to just get to know, oh, I remembered. You are doing your program or doing your exercises or working with a trainer or working with an instructor, whoever. You are only with them for that time that you're working with them. So it's up to you to get to know how your body works, what the point of things are, how to move well, absorb what they say, so that you can take it to go throughout the rest of your time throughout the week. Because for example, I'm only training my clients a couple times a week. However, I teach them as much as I can so that they know when they're not with me, they're like, oh yeah, Kate told me I should dig my toes into the floor when I'm doing a squat because that will, create optimal movement and I'm good to go on my own when she's not with me. 
See what I mean? Moving on. Tip number two. Get yourself a water bottle and make it your best friend. Fill the water bottle up, carry it around like you are attached at the hip. That will just remind you to drink your water because it's literally right there. My water bottle is always with me. I'm always refilling it. There's so many benefits to just drinking water. You have to be drinking water. And I said this in a recent video of reasons why you're not seeing results. I'll link it right here for you. But a lot of people just aren't drinking enough water and they're not setting themselves up to be able to drink enough throughout the day. And you don't want to be playing catch up later Later in the day and like have only drank like 20 ounces or whatever and then the day has gone and you're not hydrated still so make sure you're getting a water bottle or carry around a cup if you have to carry around a cup but water bottles are so cheap you can find them wherever just get yourself a water bottle carry it around if you are working or if you're seated down seated seated if you're seated wait that also doesn't sound Okay, so if you're sitting most of the day, it's a good opportunity to drink the water because obviously you gotta drink the water, but then you will be able to readjust your position as you're going to the restroom because we all know that happens, and then as well as going to refill the water. So it all kind of correlates together to, what about, together to get more movement in throughout the day. Playing off of that one, into tip number three, get more steps in. Just get more overall movement in. And steps is just an awesome way to do that. Again, like what I had said for the last tip, it's a good way to just break up the long periods of sitting or just the long periods of standing. Just that static position that you are in most likely throughout the day. And again, everyone's different but it's a good change up and just getting more steps in will just overall increase the activity that you are having throughout the day and then just bring you up that next level to see results. If people come back at me and they're like, oh, I don't have enough time. Or they try to make it a little bit more complicated than it has to be, just go for a walk. Just go for a walk. Leave the place that you live or your office or wherever you are throughout the day. Just walk 10 minutes away walk 10 minutes back and then you're good. Just that little bit will make a difference. So just try to incorporate more movement throughout the day. Or if you're like on a phone call, if you're like all busy and stuff, <laughs> or you're doing busy work. So sometimes I'll just like be on my phone on Instagram or if I'm working on a post, I'll do it while I am on the treadmill. Or if you're on the phone a lot, you can maybe take a call, a work call, whatever call that you're taking, maybe on a walk. Try to use the time wisely to get more movement in. Steps. Tip number four. Get to know how your body moves and the compensations that are most common for you. I see this so often. People are very unaware of how their body moves. And again, when I'm with my clients, I make it known to them like, hey, just so you know, when you did that step up, your knee did cave in. It seemed like your arch collapsed. So if you just grip your toes in, drive your knee out to the side, squeeze your glutes a little bit more, the move will become more optimal as you go up and down in the step up. Of course, that's just an example. Actually, it's a very common example. A lot of people struggle with that. But get to know your body, especially through exercise. And just in general, I guess, even when you're seated, sitting, seated, why am I having such trouble with this word? When you are sitting down, try to notice the way that you're sitting. Try to correct postural imbalances or just recognize compensations that you have. So use a mirror in some cases. Using a mirror sometimes is not the most ideal way. For example, if you're doing dead lifts and your head is up and you are hinging back, your head should be looking down. So if you're looking at yourself in a mirror, no good because then your form is compromised. So the mirror can be good in some exercises. That will just be like up to you to figure out based on the form and the exercise that you're doing. Another thing, filming yourself. Filming my YouTube videos has been a great thing because I'm able to look back on the footage and really get to know how my body works as opposed to just like using my phone or whatever I was doing before. Asking a friend. 
be like, hey, yo, friend, this is what I'm looking for. This is the exercise that I'm trying to do. This is the form I want to get down. And then can you just check to make sure I am doing it in the best way and that there's no compensations? Or you can tell them like, hey, I have this compensation. I tend to do this when I do this. So if you can just look to make sure that that's not happening. Okay, one more hair touch. And we're done. <laughs> Tip number five, the last one. Try not to completely cut out foods. So me, as you know, especially if you watch my vlogs, I am a sweet connoisseur. I just love sweets. Just like love them so much. However, when I am eating sweets a lot, it's very hard for me to um, stop just because I love them and of course we know with sugar it's not satiating and it just increases the cravings whatever whatever you are eating and you're like I have to cut this out. no you don't have to it's okay especially playing off of what I had talked about in the last video just being aware of what you're eating just be more aware of it maybe only have it a couple times a week and then just look forward to that moment or just pre write it down so in the beginning of the day if I know I'm gonna have dessert at night or whatever that you're trying to cut out I'm aware of it so I can include like the ice cream that I'm gonna have in my calorie count for the day so that I know how to plan accordingly, so that there's no guilt to having it. And then I'm gonna to quickly touch on cutting out macronutrients. Uh, to be totally honest, not a fan. They are called macronutrients for a reason, and I find that they are all necessary. So carbohydrates, fats, proteins, all important. I'm just gonna leave that there to each their own, but I'm not a fan of cutting out any food groups. And that is it. That is all five tips that I have for you today. Thank you so much for watching. If you made it this far, I really appreciate it. Of course, make sure you wrap up all of these tips. Check out the first video if you hadn't seen it yet. Wrap them all up, absorb them, take them to go, share them with a friend. Hope you have a great day and I will see you next time. Bye. Number one. Make effort into a on someone's coming. <laughs>